Download day three, and I'm joined by the gentleman who's made this all possible, and that's Andy Copping. Andy, welcome to your own festival. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Sun's out, it's a beautiful day today. Day three, we've got there, well, we're about halfway through, we've got Lamb and God playing in the, uh, in the background. Um, amazing, amazing. Friday was not the world's best weather, of course. Do you, you, do you start to worry on things like that? Uh, to be honest, you, you worry about all kinds of weather conditions. If it's too hot, it's unpleasant. Obviously, with the rain that we'd had on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, it made things really, really tough here. The one thing about rock fans is they're so resilient, you can throw anything at them, and it's like, come on, whatever you've got, we're still going to have the time of our lives. And the same with the bands. And you know what, they've fought the way through it. I've walked around the site today. Everybody's in great spirits. You know, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable buzz here at the moment, which is what we've always had at Download. And I just appreciate the support that the fans and the bands have given us over the years, but particularly this year, and letting us celebrate our 10th anniversary in such great style. Now here, as you say, it's the 10th year of Download. You started it after, with the reputation of Monsters of Rock going before you. Did you think you'd get to 10 years? It's funny because when you first, you know, when we first launched the festival in 2003, you kind of, all your focus is in on that one festival and getting it done and making it work and getting it out of the way. And then you think, oh, is there any chance we can do it next year and the year after? So you don't really think that far ahead. And then, in a, you know, in a whisker, suddenly, you know, we're into our 10th festival. But what it does make you think is that, you know, the, the festival has grown from 35,000 people across two days two two stages now we're a hundred thousand people 70,000 of them camping three days five stages I mean it's immense I mean I part of me thinks you know we should have like a week of it you know and maybe have ten stages a day which would be super immense I think we're probably at the point which is we're very comfortable with the amount of people uh, and the amount of stages and everything we've got on but we're always looking to make improvements within the confines of what we've got and we're always talking with the customers on, on what they want to see at the festival and it seems to have paid off for us well the format's been the same for the last two or three years you've moved it about a bit you were inside the race circuit at one stage, you were in the car park at one stage. Yeah. It seems to be working the way it is now, don't you think? Well, we've been in this layout, we've been in this now for four, four festivals. There's no question for me, it's the best layout that we've ever had. It's the best layout at Donington. A few people obviously, you know, going, oh, why it's not the same because it's not within the race circuit. And it's fine for them to have that opinion. But the reality is, is when you look at it and you walk around the site, this layout is perfect for the kind of event that we're putting on. And I'm just so happy that it's still within Donington Park itself. It's just not, we're not within the racetrack. And the way that it's laid out, because of the, because of the terrain, the, the two big stages, one and two, you've got those hills that people are stand on, so everyone gets a good view. Whereas you go to some festivals, which is on a flat field. Yeah. If you're at the back, you don't see a great deal, but here you can see even from the back. Yeah, it's all about the hills and the valleys, and it seems to work really, really well. And it's good to explore going around the festival and um, not just going to see new bands, but going around and actually seeing how everything is all laid out, now you get from one place to the other. You know, it's a real adventure for everybody. How long does it take you to plan? I mean, here we are, the 2012 festival. How far down the road are you already with 2013? As I've said to a lot of people, we're never closed. We're always, always open. Um, I booked the, my first headliner for 2013 back in April. We'll be making the announcement about that, you know, uh, as soon as we can. I want to get the other two headliners in place, certainly at least one of them, before we make an announcement. But you're at it all the time. You've got to make sure that you know, you're know you right at the front line if bands are thinking about touring and it's the bands that you want for your festival. So yeah, it's very, very important that you know, we're on it very early and I have to, you know, I have to be ahead of the game. Well, I mean, bands like Black Sabbath who you've got here this weekend, ACDC, Aerosmith, you, you've got to book them years ahead, I imagine. Um, in a lot of cases, yes. You've got to find out the cycle of where they're playing at any given time. Um, so, yeah, you've just got to be make sure that you're available to speak to them. Looking back over 10 years, approximately 30 headliners and countless other bands, every year I'm sure you say this is the best one yet, but there must be a few little highlights that stand out as you look back on it. Well, it's, the highlight obviously was 2003 when we first launched. Um, 
2003 we had Metallica play a secret set you know, on the second stage which was in a tent at the time, amazing. 2004 for me was incredible, the whole thing with Lars not showing up and Joe from Slipknot and Dave Lombardo from Slayer filling in on drums, amazing. 2005, the first year we went to three days, one of the days was an Ozfest, you know, it's Black Sabbath headlined. 2006, when it was like Guns N' Roses, Tall, Metallica, Metallica doing, you know, the um, doing the Master of Puppets album, amazing. Uh, 2007, I'm Maiden, like, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I could give you a highlight from each individual, hard to pinpoint one. You know, each year it doesn't get that much easier. You've just got to keep going out there and getting the best build that you can at any given time. Now, having booked the world's best bands for the last 10 years, you can't help but repeat yourself sometimes. You know, Metallica come back and those other. How much diffi how difficult is it to try and keep the whole thing fresh and a new a new headliner or a new approach? Well, the headliners are obviously massively important, but I think you've got to add a lot of colour around you. But remember, there's 148 bands playing this weekend. You know, three of those bands here are main stage headliners. That leaves 145 other bands. So if you've got a lot of strength right throughout the bill on the other stages, then that is going to make your festival really strong. Um, there's always going to be repeats, but then again, if you think Metallica, it was the third headline in slot at download. Am I not going to take them, particularly after seeing that show last night because they played twice previously? Obviously, it'd be nice if you can have, you know, a decent gap in between each time that they play. But, you know, I, I wrote a list out of bands that could possibly headline downloads and bands that have played before, and the list was just shy of 40 altogether. Okay, some of those bands may not be willing to play the festival for one reason or another, or they're not touring. But there is actually a decent glut of bands to go after and we've got to promote young bands coming through to bring them through as the headliners of tomorrow. If you're able to say so, and I know due to contract negotiations you may not, is there a band you really would like to see at Download in the next year or two that you haven't yet had? I'd love, uh, th there's a number of them. I'd love to do the Rolling Stones. I think that would be amazing on one of the days. Pink Floyd would be incredible. Led Zeppelin would be just off the scale. Um, but the original lineup of Guns N' Roses, I think, would just be spectacular. Um, and there's like four bands that I would you know, easily chase and, and, and have if they were available to me. Well, Guns N' Roses, you've had them in, in parts, haven't yeah. you? So. Oh no, we have, but you know, to get the original line of a Guns N' Roses, which I just think would be uh, just unbelievable. Slash, Duff, Izzy, obviously Axel, you know, whether it's Steven Adler or um, you know Matt on drums, uh, make no difference. Just to get that that seminal, that, that front line, Izzy, Duff, Slash, and Axel would be amazing. And that's your wish list. Those four bands are your yeah. wish list. Do you think? Practically, there is a possibility that in a future download you will have one of those? Well, do you know what? You can never say never at the end of the day. If you look at some of the bands that we've had over the years, we've had amazing turnouts and, you know, surprises. Said System of a Down, never get back together. Aerosmith would split up, we're never going to do it. ACDC would never do festivals. You know, there's always been, been something. Faith No More, you know, we got back together. It's... Um, there's always you can never say never. Yeah. Good. Well, we look forward to seeing what what comes. The announcement for 2013 should be with us when? Well, you know, as soon as possible, really. I mean, I just want to get the other two headliners in place, and then we'll make, make the news. So maybe in a few months' time. Good. Look out for that, and then we'll see you all again here in 12 months' time. Thanks very much. Thanks, Andy.